NASA's current administrator, Bill Nelson, is one of the few government officials who witnessed the entire commercialization of U.S. space. And the pioneer in this revolution is SpaceX, a young and private company, but the giant Boeing's rival in NASA's commercial crew program. Clearly, the crew carrying contract is a perfect stepping stone for SpaceX to make its Crew Dragon the only U.S. human rated spacecraft today. In contrast, it is a punishment for Boeing due to a series of errors on its Starliner spacecraft. As a wise person, Nelson is wrapping himself into the commercial crew flag and quickly changes his stance on SpaceX and Boeing. Game over. NASA boss finally declared Boeing. Starliner is too bad, can't beat SpaceX. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. As we expected, Boeing's Starliner delays again. According to NASA commercial crew, Starliner's return date is now targeting no earlier than June 22nd for the agency's Boeing crew flight test mission. The extra time allows the team to finalize departure planning and operations, while the spacecraft remains cleared for crew emergency return scenarios within the flight rules. We are continuing to understand the capabilities of Starliner to prepare for the long-term goal of having it perform a six-month docked mission at the space station," said Steve Stitch, manager of NASA's commercial crew program. The crew will perform additional hatch operations to better understand its handling, repeat some safe haven testing, and assess piloting using the forward window. NASA and Boeing's teams also prepared plans for Starliner to fire seven of its eight aft-facing thrusters while docked to the station to evaluate thruster performance for the remainder of the mission. Not surprising to us given this news because Starliner has a dark profile full of postponement. To reach the space as we've seen today, Starliner has experienced a rocky journey on the ground. The troubled ship has been in development for a decade, even longer than the space shuttle which was announced in January 1972 and did not fly until April 1981, and much longer than its companion under NASA's commercial crew program, SpaceX's Crew Dragon, which took only six years to take off. In 2022, Bill Nelson, NASA's administrator, said that when there was the beginning of the space cargo and crew programs, the two serious bidders were SpaceX and Boeing, and everybody poo-pooed SpaceX and said, oh, Boeing is a legacy company. Well, guess who is about to make its sixth flight after its first test flight with astronauts? And guess who's still on the ground? Ten years have passed since NASA's commercial crew program, the SpaceX Crew Dragon, has been making regular runs to the International Space Station for over four years and has even conducted commercial space flights. The Boeing Starliner has been playing catch-up, with a lot of failures, cancellations, and no-end scandals. So why did Boeing stumble coming out the gate even though it got more funding than SpaceX? Elon Musk, on X, was succinct but brutal, pointing out one of many reasons for this. Too many non-technical managers at Boeing, he wrote. SpaceX CEO highly values leaders and managers with extensive knowledge in the field they are pursuing. I strongly believe that all managers in a technical area must be technically excellent. Managers in software must write great software or it's like being a cavalry captain who can't ride a horse, he supposed. Boeing, on the other hand, does not follow this principle. Instead, it forced diversity, equality, and inclusion DEI, policies. DEI essentially has a positive purpose as it promotes the representation and participation of different groups of individuals, including different ages, races, ethnicities, abilities, disabilities, genders, religions, cultures, and sexual orientations. However, in Boeing, this policy has lost its good nature and gotten into the melting point to serve the toxic culture chasing nepotism, promoting incompetent people in highly specialized positions like management or flight crews in the cockpit has led to plummeting standards in the manufacturing and operating process. The fall of Boeing and the strong rise of SpaceX have brought government officials down to earth, given that its amazing partner known for safety and engineering literally passed over 27 years ago after the historic merge with McDonnell Douglas. Boeing at present is just a ghost of the past. It explained why NASA is now relying totally on SpaceX to fly astronauts to ISS with 14 contracts on Crew Dragon. This seems to be against the anti-monopoly ideology that they have been chasing for a while. Nevertheless, Bill Nelson still does believe in the correction of that decision. 
I think the private space industry is extremely beneficial, he said. Just look at what SpaceX has already accomplished. This isn't the first time that the head NASA honcho has glossed over his history of SpaceX ambivalence. At his NASA nomination hearing back in 2021, Nelson argued that through a series of laws dating back to the mid-80s, he'd personally laid the foundation for the emergence of the modern commercial space sector. But according to former NASA Deputy Administrator Lori Garver in her book, Escaping Gravity, My Quest to Transform NASA and Launch a New Space Age, published June 21, 2022, Nelson is just wrapping himself into the commercial crew flag and attempting to rewrite history. Nelson was considered a staunch anti-SpaceX advocate back in the time of a Florida senator. In her memoir, Lori Garver also accused the government and NASA officials of making her and even other SpaceX supporters the target of ridicule, verbal attacks, and racism due to their support of SpaceX years ago. During the time Garver filled the role of NASA's deputy administrator under the Obama administration, the U.S. space industry was on the threshold of commercialization, and the agency just early interacted with SpaceX. This mercurial official quickly realized that the private companies would be able to provide the government the golden chance to make space launches more affordable. Then, she allowed those companies a chance to propose alternatives to NASA programs. But ironically, this got her into trouble. Garver recalled an incident that Nelson, then a Florida senator, took her to task for this. In one particularly uncomfortable one-on-one -on -one meeting in his Senate hideaway, the intensity of his ire felt personally threatening, Garver wrote. In response to public comments Elon Musk had made about SpaceX's ability to improve on NASA's existing programs, Bill Nelson shouted at me to get your boy Elon in line. To be honest, people who shared Bill Nelson's views were not uncommon in Garver's time. Her book describes the environment she endured as one where self-interest is prioritized rather than the greater good of the program. NASA's leaders were typically astronauts and engineers who didn't question the public value or relevance of their activities. Indeed, many considered flying themselves and their friends in space to be an entitlement, Garver said. They had little interest in transitioning what they enjoyed and got paid to do over to the private sector, and they assumed that was their decision. Neil Armstrong was one of several astronauts to diss the commercial space industry. In 2012, the first man to walk on the moon sent a letter to 60 Minutes with the content as follows. I support the encouragement of the newcomers toward their goal of lower cost access to space. But having cut my teeth in rockets more than 50 years ago, I am not confident. The most experienced rocket engineers with whom I have spoken believe that it will require many years and substantial investment to reach the necessary level of safety and reliability," he wrote. Musk's response to the letter in 60 Minutes made many people hold back a little tear when he was talking about his heroes doubting him. I was very sad to see that uh, because those guys are, yeah, you know, those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here. Not only Musk, but also his supporters suffered a tough attack from the conservatives. Many who disagreed with my views attacked me with vulgar, gendered language, depredation, and physical threats, Garver wrote. I've been called an ugly whore, a motherfucking bitch, and a cunt, told I need to get laid and asked if I'm on my period or going through menopause. Nevertheless, she has never felt shame for her dedication to the spaceflight. As she said, if the government were up to Nelson, NASA would still be entirely dependent on Russia's Soyuz rocket to send astronauts to the International Space Station. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.